Caitlin here and welcome to Card Game Tuesday, the day of the week where we celebrate all things card game related and today in particular it is here, I promise you this, in my vlog on Sunday there, well it kind of came out late Monday technically because of the time differences and whatnot and it took a while to actually upload because as you saw it was a very long vlog but we are here with my deck profile from my Birmingham Grand Prix, um, it is actually, I came 11th so this is my deck profile for it and whatnot so the idea of it obviously is, as you saw before, it is Prissia Spinning Mist. I've made a couple of little tweaks or whatever, in particular to my sideboard and some of the kind of like, support in the main board or whatever, so it's not like exactly the same as the other Prissia Mists that were being run or whatever, but this was like my kind of version that I ran, one that I was pretty comfortable with and pretty happy with. I may have made a couple of changes or whatever, but um, we'll go into that as I get into the deck. So as you know, Prissia Spinning Mist, Pretty simple forward or whatever. I obviously didn't have the Prissia in the top loader when I was playing because when you're playing, you're meant to have like your ruler covered or whatever when you start the GP and when you flip it or whatever, people know what you're playing. So you should all know by now what Prissia does, obviously. she got the whole resonance abilities, give swiftness when you get a fire magic stone, flying when you get a wind magic stone. She's got energized for fire or wind and her judgment is two for fire and wind. And when she flips over, she's like this huge mountain wall of text where essentially when she enters or attacks, you can either put a stone to the bottom of your stone deck and call in a stone or put a resonator to the bottom of your deck and bring in uh, a resonator if it's on the top of your deck and if it's not, then the card goes to hand and everything like that. And she's also got her God's Art, which is for two and a fire and magic stone needs to have entered that turn for order to, for this to activate to recover Prissia and give flying and swiftness to everything until end of turn. And obviously she's a 1000-1000. So... I tended not to rely too heavily on her, I believe. I usually only did it if I was fairly comfortable that I would be able to kill with her that turn because obviously I'd like to get the gods art off. So usually I would wait until at least I had an Izanagi out who was at least buffed up somewhat to kind of support her and everything like that. So that was why I kind of waited and everything like that and maybe like make sure I had at least a Windsclude Refuge or if my opponent wasn't playing black, at least knowing that um I had a decent bunch of regalia to buff her up a little bit. So that was kind of my main idea when I was playing her. I wasn't really going like totally aggressively with her or whatever so I wasn't like flipping her too early I was usually flipping her when I had like a decent amount of stones back me up or like some sacred elves and whatnot as we go into the main deck so in terms of numbers and whatnot for what I was running in the main deck you also see that in the description my full list here and whatever uh, we have here four sacred elves pretty standard you know tap for green and whatnot usually I would like to get this out turn one uh, usually uh, what I would do is if I managed to draw this turn one, I would, if I had energized by going second, I would pop the energized to play the sacred elf and then tap for a stone because obviously all my stones and my stone base tap for win, uh, not win, for red. So with the resonance ability, if I managed to get like any basic, any stone basically, wherever the elf would gain swiftness and I could tap her for a green for say another, for like even another sacred elf or a tam and whatnot. So it's always best to maybe wait and see what you draw, like I wouldn't tap straight away, because obviously if you tap straight away and you're not played anything or whatever, then you're not giving anything that boost from the resonance and whatnot. So that's why I would, if I would, I would burn my token or whatever, my energized token, in order to put in either a sacred elf or a Gwyn or something like that, and then make sure I could give it swiftness and that. So that was like my main like ideal turn one, would be either sacred elf or the next card that we actually have, which is, I can grab it here, because it's off to the side here. For Tamas, obviously this is also a great play if we manage to, going second, we use our Energize for Secret Elf, give the Secret Elf swiftness and use the Secret Elf to play for Tama, so draw a card, so that nets us quite a decent amount, we get an extra card draw, we have a mana producer, whatever, and we've got Tama as like a little beat stick, or whatever, a little blocker, um, depending on what their turn one play is, or, or sorry, their turn two set technically if they're going first. So ideally, we would have Secret Elf, we would get Tama in our first turn, and then going into our next Turn, we would get a Gwyn, give the Gwyn swiftness, Gwyn can sack the Tama and whatnot for extra card draw, which we are running actually three Gwyns. I originally did have four, because I know a lot of lists who play Spinning Miss potentially have four Gwyns. I felt like I was seeing her way too much when I didn't really need her uh, when I ran four. So I put it down to three, which may seem a little bit odd, but considering that... Um, all of the stones that we have tapped for red, it won't be too hard to get her out when we do get her. So that's why I only ran it at three. She always does this stuff where obviously you tap her and banish the resonator. You draw two cards and discard ones, which is great for filtering through the deck and getting through to the cards that we really, really need to set up and everything. And I basically never use the second ability because why would you really? The main idea for Gwen is obviously to shuffle through your deck or whatever, grab the things that you need and stuff like that. So we're running out at three. 
Next up, I believe I ran three. I don't have my actual deck list on me because I had to have submit it, obviously. I do believe I ran three Prisias in my main board. I was potentially just thinking of having two main board and one inside deck, but in the end, I just changed it or whatever. Decided to run three. She's obviously a really good uh, aggro play, whatever, with a three cost. She's seven four. She's got swiftness, target attack, first strike, which is always awesome. If we manage to get a stone in before, like when we play her, um, we can give her, ideally, the flying, so we don't have to pay the green to give her flying, unless we uh, hit one of our stones that doesn't uh, produce green. And obviously she's got the awesome effect that when our opponent kills her and she's put into graveyard from our field, uh, she deals 500 damage to them. So that's basically like a, a lightning strike for her dying and whatnot. So... Ran three of these. She was super good in the deck or whatever. She was also like a good aggro play or whatever to try and force my opponent to block her um, in order to get rid of some of their blockers and whatnot. So she was very good. She was a very good play. Next up, we have the main beat stick of the deck, which is our four Izanagis. Uh, we'll put the filler at the front here because the filler is super, super pretty. Uh, I was contemplating just running three, um, but the when I was only running three, I wasn't seeing Izanagi enough, which is the main problem. So that's why I decided to run four. At one point, I was sitting with like two Izanagis in hand and not having a spinning miss, which is why um, I changed up my stone deck or whatever before, obviously, uh, before entering or whatnot, so that I would still have two sources of light and the odd chance that I can hard cast Izanagi instead. So obviously, you know what Izanagi does or whatever. When you enter, she can target up to three either Resonators or Regalia. Most of the time, I chose to get rid of Regalia because Regalia is super duper annoying. And I side Heavenly Gust. So in that turn one, when I don't have a way to really actively destroy Regalia and whatnot, Izanagi is best getting rid of Regalia. Especially Regalia that they um, usually maybe can't use to, like, maybe Regalia is like Death Scythe. They can't really banish the Death Scythe in any regards. So that's a good one to steal, obviously. And that way I can ensure I can get Swiftness if I decide to flip. Getting rid of their Apollos is also good to stop. That's what happened when I went up against Lumia. Um, she had an Apollo and whatnot, and because I had no blockers with flying, it was get, like hitting me for quite hard, but I managed to get rid of the Apollo, and she couldn't fly anymore, which is really good when I gave Izanagi flying himself, so uh, Lumia couldn't block. So that was very super duper handy. So he was a very good good play in this, obviously. He's the main like kind of block, uh, main kind of attacker or whatever for spinning myths. So he was really good. I did contemplate um, running... Um, the uh, Ox King um, as, alongside him, whatever, because you saw that in my original build of Spinning Mist, I did have Ox King. But I decided the Ox King was uh, just a bit too slow, because obviously um, he doesn't really net gain me too much when he enters, whatever. If he has Swiftness, I mean, that's great. But at the same time, it's like he doesn't have any other awesome effects. He gets bigger and bigger, obviously, for all the things that he kills. But it's just like, it's not really good if like we're giving him flying and he doesn't actually kill anything, which um, Izanagi is just better in that regard, which is why we're running four of him. And then our last resonator is Frigg. I tended to side Frigg out when I went up against my Prissia matchups um, because obviously she's a bit slow even with Spinning Myths. So I sided her out normally if I went up against uh, another Prissia. Um, in regards to like other decks, she was a little bit kind of like dead or whatever when I was running up against Foxes because they had Abduls and the one person who was running the light element when th with their Fox deck had Seal of Wind and Light and they also had Abduls. So when I was trying to kill the Abduls and whatnot, they were just like, you know what, can't all your spells are going to kill Abdul so Frigg's ability never really went off I believe I did get it off like in one or two games or whatever but I mainly sided her out um in regards to like putting other stuff in so she did get some play or whatever but she didn't have like a great amount of worth and whatnot to the whole deck as a to the deck as a whole and then going into our spells, we are obviously running four copies of Spinning Mist, which ideally we can like get either in our first hand or we can get and dig through with our different ways to draw and whatnot. Usually I'd feel pretty good if I get it in the first hand. I will definitely keep it because um, I know there are four copies in it, so we're more than likely to see it. But at the same time, it's just very nice to have it as soon as possible because if we have also Sacred Elf, then we know that by at least turn three, we could potentially drop it turn three and hit pretty hard depending on what our opponent has so that's why i'm running four copies of spinning mist and obviously the torrent ability is the best or not so always trying to hit that torrent ability to get that extra stone and give izanagi the flying and the swiftness depending on which stone we get next up we have two copies to burn to cinders i would have liked to have run more copies i feel i think that might have been a little bit of a downside i th feel like i should have run a play set 
because I did desperately need this card at certain points to deal with like Abdul and whatnot, and sadly, obviously, it doesn't have Remnant. And um, when I was going for that Fox Get, what was running the Seal of Wind and Light, it was getting cancelled. And really, this was one of my only ways of getting rid of Abdul, other than the other card that I have in my deck, which I'll show you in a wee second. But this is super duper good. It was good for dealing with Abduls. Um, it was good for picking off things that were like quite annoying, like um, Sukiyomi Noble. That was another one that was quite good. Um, it was good to get rid of and whatnot. And I never used this against a J ruler, I believe. Uh, I never used it because obviously I didn't really come up against any J rulers or whatever that had less defense and whatnot. So it wasn't really good there, but it was very good for getting rid of very annoying things. But I kind of wish I'd maybe ran more copies of this, at least maybe a playset, because it was a super useful card to have. Next up, I actually have two main board copies of a Flame Trap. Now, there's an argument to be made about whether you main Flame Trap or whether you just have it inside. I know potentially most people would prefer to just have it inside, but this card was super, super useful, useful especially in my last game, where I, I explained in my vlog wherever I went up against Light Dragon and whatnot. Um, he kind of swarmed his field. He had, like, the Vingolf 3 Faria. He had two Sols. He had, like, a Wendy. He had, like, the Alabaster Drake and whatnot. He would basically tapped himself out of all the stones playing his resonators and um, the turn before ever I had literally put down the two of these in my chance standby waiting for him to attack so I was waiting for him to spend up all his mana playing resonators he had like maybe six or so in the field and I just went double flame trap and that was really good because it got rid of Faria and since obviously flame trap doesn't target uh, he couldn't cancel it over he was he was out of mana anyway so or well essentially so he couldn't have stopped the ability but it was super super useful in my last game so that's why I kept these in main board it wasn't as useful um in regards to the fox games obviously because if the fox is still up and whatnot and they have a killing stone they could just use to like choose to sack some of their things to create another chimera in the off chance it was always good to just get rid of Abdul with it because Abdul obviously it was super annoying and it this deals 800 so at least if i didn't get my burn to cinders off and they had enough resonators on field i could flame trap it so that was also another good play and whatnot so i was very happy with having two of these in the main board lastly for our spells i have ran two lightning bolts this was um I was like debating to run this uh, over like Memory to Memoria. I like Memory to Memoria. It is a really nice card and whatnot. But obviously, when I was talking with my friends, whatever, or when we were going, and I was talking about what to have for this red spell, they said, you know what? Lightning Bolt just nets you more worth because obviously it's quick cast, it can hit the opponent and a resonator. You don't really need the ability to just fire anyway if you're hitting the resonator, and not many things well, are t terribly worth killing for 400 with Memory to Memoria. Like, you can kill Gwyns or whatever if you come up against them, Sacred Elves and everything like that. But Lightning Bolt is just more happier uh, in the main deck or whatever because obviously it's just instant kill. I mainly use this just to hit people for face. Just be like, you know what, I've got that extra red sitting up, I'm just going to hit you for face and just like deal a bit more chunk about it. I did um, side this out um, when I was going against more Regalia heavy decks and to like side in Heavily Gust or Gale Force when I was going up against the Fox and the Chimeras because obviously two out of the three Chimeras have flying and you really want those out of the way. So I mainly sided this out but I did see play a couple of times and it was kind of useful. And lastly, uh, well, lastly for additions anyway, three wins cleared refuge. Not really much to say here. It did do some worth. I never came up against a black moonbeam, I believe. I always made sure that if I did flip Prissia, they did not have access to two black. So maybe they only had one black or whatever, or they were completely tapped out. So it didn't really do much to protect Prissia. It was mainly there to protect things like Izanagi. So say if someone else was trying to Izanagi, my Izanagi, I would use this to protect him and uh, make sure he didn't go away. I used it to protect things like... Um, I think I used it to protect um, the, maybe the Tamas? Um, I don't think it was the Tamas. I think it was maybe Prissy or whatever. Or stuff that would just, you know, like really hurt my resonators. Like maybe, um, I'm trying to think of other stuff. Like, I think I did see a Burn to Cinders at one point. Or I did see a, um, what is that one? Is it Dark Purge? I think there was dark, a Dark Purge as well at one point. So um, it was very useful for that. And also very handy for the card draw. And obviously, Frig can fish this out if we do ban banish it to protect the resonator and whatnot. So, it was handy. It did have some plays, whatever. I still believe that running three is quite good or whatever. Even though some people argue, oh, the cost two isn't much net worth, whatever, of drawing a card. But I still think it's, a it's good for main board. And then last but not least, we have the whole bunch of regalia that I ran in order to support Prissia and basically help me against these matchups. So, going into our regalia. 
we have two Apollo, mainly to give Prissy a flying, but also really handy for the secondary effect of bouncing something to her hand if we banish the Apollo. I used this at one point against Fox to banish Tama to then play Tama again, and in that draw I drew a spinning mouse when I had two and Nikes in hand, which was super, 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 super good. So that's why I really run this, and it's amazing. I ran three Levitons, um, mainly because I only own three, but now that I got the top 16 promo, I now have a place out of four. Not all matching or whatever, but you know, we'll love. I'll love anyway. I know some people are just like, oh my god, not all the rarities match, but I ran three Levitons. Uh, I mainly used this for the swiftness, obviously. Uh, this was really good, obviously, to torrent the spinning myths to prepare for potentially flipping Prissia after Izanagi gets his thing off. And I did banish it occasionally. And when there was one point where Prissia did die, I think it was through a trade off with another Prissia. And I banished this to give him perishable, obviously. Um, and that was really, really super handy, sort of. So I ran through or whatever. There was points where I did lose some of them. Like um, I lost some to, I believe I lost some to Manticore. I lost some to opposing Izanagis and whatnot. But on the but on the most point, I did keep them for the majority of my games. Uh, two Death Scythe, obviously, for the Prissia matchup is super duper important. Make sure she doesn't get that swiftness. Also very handy against the Lumia when she had swiftness, obviously, when she flips and whatnot. And also very good for pumping Prissia up for 2-2 because obviously the Levitons only do it for 200 damage, but that doesn't like stop her getting her defense up. So this is actually really good for getting her defense up and whatnot. And then last but not least, I had one horn. This was actually super good against um what match was it? I believe one of my Fox matches and then one of my um Prissia matches was super good because there's one point where my deck was literally like this thin left because we literally gone through so many cards. I believe it was last game and I drew the horn and I banished the horn to shuffle my deck in because we were literally so close to just decking out. It was unbelievable. Like I couldn't believe we got, we got to that point where we were literally nearly decking out. So the horn did have its uses, although I did choose to side it occasionally for Gale Force or for um, Heavenly Gust or whatnot. So it did one really good play and that was really all it really did. But it did save me for that one match. Next up into our sideboard, obviously, um, there was a couple of things in here that I never actually touched, but I wanted to keep in sideboard just because it was really handy. So I had three Wall of Wind, and the off chance that I ended up going up against a lot of counter spells, I ended up not sending this in. I felt like um, at the point where it was just like I had to play a bit more aggressively, as opposed to a bit more countery, if that makes any sense at all. So um, I didn't want to like kind of side this in mostly. I had it inside just in case, um, but I never actually put it into the deck. I had three three, not three, I had two Red Boy. In the off chance, I went up against a Feasting Turbo Wyber deck. I never actually played one, so I never actually sided in. The main reason I had this inside was to deal with Feasting, because obviously, if I spinning this, this in, he deals 500 damage to everything, which is really good for picking off all their little things or whatever, so like their Tamas, their Gwens, uh, Sacred Elves if they're playing those, and all those little, those small things that, uh, if they are playing Titania, I also help them out, whatever, and they can add and brawly those things, so I mainly had this for uh, feasting matchups, I never played against one, so he never ended up going into the deck. I had two Rayola. Rayola is another card which was like super, I have the full art as well, so I'll put this at the front. Rayola is super, super good. Um, I know my friend Jason who got into top eight, he ran one of these at Rayola for his zero, which is also really good. I ran this obviously in the off chance that I was being super aggressive with uh, a Prissia. I believe I sided this in once, but I never actually, Prissia never actually died. So um, it ended up, I, I didn't actually draw it either. So it wasn't like too much of a, a loss or whatever, but obviously she kills your ruler if it becomes astral. So that was the main point of her being in the side whatever and since we have two uh, light source whatever it wasn't hard to cast or whatnot so I never actually ended up playing her but I am happy I had her in here just on the off chance because you need to be prepared in all these times especially if you're being aggressive with uh, Prissia. I had two rapid growths again I never side these in I just had these in the off chance that um, we got like say a bunch of sacred elves out so we had the extra will to float and whatever to use the rapid growths never actually put these in so it's not too much of a loss. I did put this in though uh, the great holy ceiling wave Wave, isn't it? Yeah, wave. I keep calling it Holy Ceiling Wind, but it's not that. So this was used in using against Abdul, mainly when I went up against Fox. So we have the two Barn to Cinders, and even though this one doesn't kill Abdul, it just puts it to the bottom of the deck, it's still super duper handy. I believe I also used this um, torrenting it against an Arla in the Lumia matchup, I believe, if I remember correctly, or it might have been another card, actually. But um, I did use this with the torrent for the four cost to put into the bottom. But yeah, this was handy as well. Again, I only ran this at two, mainly because um, I have more 
more access to red than I do to wind in my stone base. So burnt cinders was better. Um, but I did want to keep this just on the off chance that anything else came up. So I did. I did end up signing this in when I was playing against Abdul um, in the Fox decks. I cited in this a lot. I haven't really got. This was like a key play or whatever in regards to those regalia heavy decks. So the Persia matchup, the foxes that were running regalia, like they were running, I believe, horns. Um, and they were also running uh, the orb, obviously, that lets you recover your ruler and whatnot. And also this was good against the Lumia matchup when she had a bunch of regalia up. So this was also super duper handy. And then last but not least, we have the Gale Force. This was put in for, obviously, the Fox matchups with those Flying Chimeras. It was also kind of, like, I also sided in when I was up against uh, a Spinning Mist matchup with Prissia because, obviously, if um, you're giving stuff, like, Flying, like, say, Izanagi, then this can still target it because, technically, the Resonator has Flying. So you could destroy a Flying Izanagi or any other, like, annoying Flying Resonators or whatever. So that was all of my side deck, a 15 side deck as is standard, um, like, your maximum four side deck. And then last but not least, the stone base, uh, we'll get up to this. Four of Prissia stone, obviously, if we flip Prissia and we're doing the whole putting stones to the bottom, this was the one that I would mainly target to get a card draw, because the card draw is super, super useful. I would usually make sure it's one of my tapped ones or whatever, so that I don't waste a will and whatnot. So we were running four of these. We were running four of Blasting Waves, of course, to produce uh, green or red. Pretty standard and whatnot, and also counts for the God's Art. And then last but not least, we have two Blasting, uh, not Blasting Waves, Heat Ray. This one's Blasting Waves, this one's Heat Ray. This one was mainly so that, in the off chance that I don't draw uh, Spinning Mist for Izanagi, and we get a lot of uh, stones up or whatever, I can still hard cast Izanagi on the off chance. And also, in case we do side in Riola, we need that two access of light. So that's why we had these in, and obviously we still get Swiftness. Before, I was running Mono Red, which was good, but in the off chance I didn't get the Spinning Mist, it wasn't good if I wanted to hard cast Izanagi, because I had no option to. So we did that. I also had another build where I had one mono red and one mono wind. And that, again, wasn't really useful because if I got the mono wind, that was, like, great. But, like, it couldn't give anything I played that turned swiftness, which was a bit lame. So on this chance, we have red all round. So everything will get swiftness no matter what stone we call in, which is the main uh, idea for it and whatnot. So, and as we said before, these are the promos I obviously got for playing. Persistent Machine promo was the Horn of Sacred Beasts, looking super duper pretty here. And my top 16 promo was Levitin the Demon's Sword. My very first of each of these so that's pretty awesome like i have almost um like i have the hydromonica as well obviously so that's quite a lot of the regalia promos that i have now i think i'm missing like the kind of um the full art death scythe one and i think they did a full art levitin one as well at one point or whatever but these are super duper pretty so i'm happy with those so anyway guys that has been my deck profile for my top 16 prissia beastmaster deck let me know in the comments down below what you think about it do you think that um now that prissia miss has actually won a GP or whatever. Do you think that she does need a ban? Do you think she needs a Rata? Do you think that she's going to keep going strong? In our GP, there was only 10, including myself, 10 Prissia ones as, like in the whole or whatever. So it wasn't too swarmed or whatever, but she was the majority. So until next time, guys, I will see you all later.